Hello and welcome to the Darren Smith Photography Tutorials. This video is all about the accessories you may use when taking photographs. Accessories are always going to be part of your kit, mainly as things that make it easier to take the photographs you want. I hope that these three videos give you a sense of the type of accessories which could be essential in helping you improve as a photographer. Part 3 is all about using accessories to manipulate light, changing how your subject looks in your picture. It is common for a photographer to use some sort of artificial source to increase the available light to their subject. Over short distances, in order to balance harsh shadows or increase the light, we could use a flash gun. This is also sometimes called a speed light. These work well over a few meters, but are completely ineffective over a long distance, such as photographing a valley or a monument. Flash guns or speed lights come in several different formats. One of the most easiest and most convenient is a pop up flash as it is simple to use and often there already. It is often built into many consumer cameras. It will produce light directly in front of the camera, which in general use is enough to light up the area needed. The problems caused with a pop-up flash are its limited range due to its low power, and it produces a harsh shadow due to the location of the light next to the lens, which makes your image seem a little flat. If you want to improve your lighting further, as with many cameras, we can add a hot shoe mounted flash. A dedicated flash or speed light is quite versatile and far more powerful than the built-in flash. Many models can adjust the head so we can change how the light falls onto the subject. One example is aiming the head directly towards the ceiling, bouncing diffused light back onto the subject. There are however some downsides which you may need to consider, such as it adds weight to your kit bag. A flash gun or speed light needs its own power supply. And of course, there are additional costs into your purchase. Off camera flash works exactly like a mounted flash, but with more opportunities to move the light source around the subject, increasing the quality and the direction of the light produced. Modern off camera flash setups use some form of wireless trigger to give the photographer more opportunities with their camera. However, we can still simply just use a cable. Another form of off camera flash is a ring flash which produces a soft and diffused flash for portrait and macro photography, as it produces pleasing results as it spreads diffused light evenly around your subject. In portrait work, it will wash the underside of a face with light, improving skin tone and shape. A continuous light source will constantly provide light for the duration of your session. Think of it as a light bulb lighting a room. It is constant, and if used correctly, will give a consistent result every time. We can move the light to different places. We can diffuse it, funnel or channel it all over the subject. We may however need additional lighting to get it just right as we see fit. A reflector does exactly what its name suggests. It reflects light. It is particularly useful when shooting photographs where the light source is predominantly from one direction as it will bounce some light back onto the shadow producing a more even balance across the subject. Reflectors often have multiple colored surfaces such as white, silver, gold and black that each give a different tone to your image. You may be wondering, a black reflector? And you'd be right, although its role is to absorb light rather than to reflect it. It is very useful to minimize reflections on shiny objects or to remove a reflected color from a nearby object, although any color can be used to give a different effect to your image. Reflectors also come in many different sizes, ranging from 30 centimeters or 12 inches up to 5 meters or 16 feet and they're quite easy to transport. If you don't have a dedicated reflector, one can easily be fashioned out of a variety of different materials. Such as aluminium foil, plain white or plain black paper are all possible reflectors which will serve the same purpose. A direct light source can produce quite a harsh shadow on your subject. A diffuser helps eliminate this harsh light by making the image look more natural. For example, a photograph here of dice has harsh shadows caused by the light source, whereas when the diffuser is in front of the source, the detail is more obvious. The light diffuser has obviously diffused the light, making it fall more evenly. Clouds produce a similar diffusion effect when they obscure the sun. We do have to be careful though, as too much diffused light makes the subject appear dull, just like on a miserable day. A backdrop can drastically enhance your photographs by either adding to the details of the photograph or removing details so we can focus on the subject. A backdrop can be a single coloured cloth, like we often find in a photo booth, a sheet of card, or a fully detailed background that helps the viewer understand the situation, such as an interview in a news channel. 
CGI filmmakers use what is known as green screen, which allows computer software to determine the edges of the subject and superimpose images in the background. Each of these self-portraits are shot in the studio. As you can see from the setup, it's actually quite easy. A background does not need to be large. It can be a sheet of paper or anything that is large enough to be effective. In order to compose your images, it may be necessary to hold certain objects in place or out of the way. Here are a few items that are particularly useful for this purpose. Larger clamps are useful for holding back heavy items or securing a backdrop to a subject. A clothes peg does the same and can be used to hold back a delicate structure that is spoiling the composition. I will often use a few pegs to hold back small branches or to stop a stem moving when photographing flowers. Some cotton thread can also be used to tie back part of a delicate structure, such as a plant to remove distractions or to frame the image better. For portrait work, a hair clip, a bobble or hairpin can be used to do exactly what it's designed for, to hold a person's hair out of their face. This is particularly useful if you are taking a legal photograph for a passport or visa. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Please feel free to check out more at darrensmith.org.uk or on YouTube, Twitter or Facebook. Thank you for watching.